Over to MK Conference 2024, Neeraf Seth, uh, CEO of Institutional Equities at MK Global Financial Services, joins in to talk to us about the markets and all about that conference. Neeraf, before I go into your view and reaction to what happened over the weekend, where do you see the markets, uh, why don't you tell us about this conference that you're hosting, uh, the MK Confluence 2024. Uh, share some insight, companies that are going to be present, what is the mood and the feelings? Well, if I have to sum up, uh, you know, in one line, it's a mini representation of, uh, of you know, India's GDP. So, you know, you got close to about 210 companies uh, over the next three days, uh, some 720 individual registrations, 300 and more houses, and close to 9,000 meetings. So, I'm, I'm assuming that by the time you end the conference, you'll have a snapshot of what is happening in Indian economies. Uh, it's got a representation from across the sectors, you know, from infrastructure to consumption to manufacturing to uh, retail and a very, very strong lineup of uh, main track sessions. You know, you've got Mr. Sagar Adani, we've got Mr. Asit Bharatram from SRF, uh, we've got Mr. Anup Bakchi. So, uh, very excited and looking forward to it. And I'm assuming that, uh, uh, you know, uh, when we are done and dusted, uh, we'll be far more optimistic than what we are today. Nirav, uh, you know, you are in the same business in some ways to what else is happening in the world in, in regard to Hindenburg and those false allegations where they tried to do character assassination of the highest share of the SEBI. Uh, this has been, uh, you know, of course, shut down by from industry leaders to market participants. But your quick reaction of how you feel and what your thoughts are? Well, my, uh, uh, you know, I had a very broad brush at uh, the level of allegations that came out. We are, you know, I'm certainly not a forensic, uh, uh, you know, expert, but I just sense that, you know, it is so frivolous. I would, uh, I would like to believe that, uh, you know, more than India or more than our top uh, chair of, uh, uh, you know, regulatory body, uh, uh, you know, I, I think this is uh, going to be the downfall of uh, people who made these acquisitions. Uh, markets are very efficient. They'll see through if you've done some good work or whether it is very frivolous in nature. Uh, and I don't think that, you know, I don't expect any reaction at all from the markets. I think it will have a natural death. So, so right now, Nirav, hi, good morning, Tamanna here. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is a sentiment that is echoed by a whole good host morning. of uh, market participants that we've spoken to, that the allegations are frivolous, etc. Having said that, uh, you know, the, the average investor would perhaps be seeing this with some nervousness, be concerned, they'll see some stocks getting hit negatively. What would be your advice for them? Well, uh, uh, you know, I would uh, advise, uh, you know, the retail investors that we should have full faith in the institutions that we have nurtured. As a matter of fact, I would like to argue that our setup, our check and balances of Indian, institution, Indian institutions are far, far more robust than what you have seen in even developed economies, right? So, uh, and that speaks volumes in terms of how we have handled, uh, uh, you know, whether it's RBI, whether it's SEBI, uh, whether it is uh, the fintech regulators, uh, we are generally ahead of the curve. And therefore, I don't think that the retail investors, uh, uh, you know, should uh, give too much of uh, importance to, uh, uh, you know, some remote uh, uh, research outfit sitting outside the country and making some allegations. And I think that, I, I think we should not underestimate, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the aggregate intelligence of the market and the retail investors. Uh, they are very, very, uh, uh, they are very, very smart. Uh, let me, let me tell you that. I think that's the point that Nirav Sheth has made enough enough times. Uh, the aggregate intelligence of Mr. Market and what it brings to the table. Nirav, uh, good morning, Neeraj here. Tell us a bit about, you mentioned that this conference is about uh, kind of representing India and India's GDP. What's the central theme? Is it is is it manufacturing-led growth? Is it newer sectors taking center stage? What is it that is the larger proportion of the corporate presence there? And what is it that investors have asked you the most when it comes to you trying and getting the, the set of companies out here? I would love to know 
where is the aggregate interest of the buy side according to you? Well, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, Neeraj, it's very difficult to try and segregate uh, the level of interest. Uh, uh, to me, and I genuinely believe this, India is no more an economy which is driven by a set of sectors, right? So, and I've made this point a couple of times that one of the larger themes uh, that we can always talk about is the democratization of the earnings, which means that the growth is being redistributed to a large number of participants away from large caps only, which means that, you know, this is true for exports, this is true for, uh, you know, manufacturing, infrastructure, uh, you know, you, you want to call it uh, PLI templates, how we are trying to insource. So what you have done is that you picked up companies across these various themes. And obviously, we are, you know, I just mentioned that uh, the number of meetings that we are uh, doing uh, tells you the level of interest that is there. Uh, so I would not call out a particular theme. Uh, uh, to me, uh, this is India's story uh, to a large extent. If you are willing to look for it, if you are keeping your eyes open, uh, I think there are very, very strong investable ideas. Nira, okay, let me try and understand this. I'm asking a, a, a daddy to choose between kids, but be that as it may, I've asked this question to you every time. There are a lot of themes that are present uh, in your conference. As Where is it that, you, as a house, you guys are predicting the highest quantum of earnings growth or return possibilities, as the case may be, as a sector? I'm not asking about specific companies, but as a sector. Which are the themes that you're looking forward to hear the most? I know you want to listen to everything, but that's not humanly possible. So where is it that you have the most interest as a house? Well, so, uh, you know, one thing is obvious that if you actually look at, uh, you know, where you got very, very strong earnings momentum are the companies where you can predict over the next three or five years. I'm not talking about valuations. So then you want to look at order books and therefore you, you want to look at companies that are there in the utilities chain, in the power chain, in the defense chain, uh, uh, in, in the railway sectors. By nature, uh, you know, because you got uh, order book, which is multiple times of your executionable uh, uh, you know, uh, capacity right now, it gives you a strong level of earning visibility. And I also believe that unlike in developed economies where you see a lot of these sectors don't make good ROEs, uh, in, uh, in Indian case, uh, right, in Indian ecosystem, a lot of these companies are making very strong ROE simply because of the fact that a part of that probably could be sub subsidized by government of India in a sense to try and ensure that, uh, you know, you, you're trying to ensure uh, uh, you know, a rapid build-up in uh, manufacturing e ecosystem in the country. Uh, so those are markets for you, Neeraj, that, you know, when you've got very strong un earning visibility uh, and a great confidence uh, in, the, in the earnings evolution over the next several years, uh, markets will discount that and therefore you have to pay a high PO for that. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, there, there are no easy answers in terms of, you know, what, what is the exact amount of risk you are carrying over here. But I am generally of the view that if you try and approach these companies as a portfolio, over a period of time, you will do well. Okay. Nirav, uh, the other, other question is there is a clutch of... Uh, the, the, the divide always there, mm. but now the divide is narrowed a bit. In not, not that every expensive stock is doing well, but some of the expensive names... In consumption, we saw Trent come out with the fabulous numbers. In capital goods or uh, automation, we saw ABB come out with some very good numbers. Cummins come out with some very good numbers. Um, some of the wind energy stocks are doing very well. Power stocks continue to do well. Where within the expensive names do you find favor? Now I'm going away from the conference alone and asking you, where is it in the punchier valuation names? Do you guys have the comfort of earnings growth and thereby would recommend that it's okay to stay invested. Yes, yeah, so by and large, uh, you know, I'm of the view uh, that, you know, the sectors that, that you specifically mentioned, for example, uh, you know, let, let's talk about renewables or let, let's talk about utilities. Usually, you, you know, these are deep cyclicals uh, and which is why people are slightly worried about trying to buy, buy something at, at a premium because uh, by there's the nature of the business that, you know, you could be uh, behind the curve in terms of anticipating where the cycle is. I am strongly of the view that what seems cyclical right now could be a long-term structural story. 
So if we have the, so we are, if we are on the same page on this investment hypothesis, uh, then we are likely to see an extended uh, period of earnings growth rate, about teen uh, earnings growth rate. And therefore, uh, we are better off trying to uh, buy these companies uh, uh, despite their valuations. Uh, and, you know, I've been very vocal about this even when I speak to my clients and all, that the only way you can cut the risk by buying this kind of stories uh, because of the valuations is you cut down the size of the bet. Uh, so maybe you are investing 100 basis points, 150 basis points, even 50 basis points. Uh, at a portfolio level, I think uh, uh, we should do better. Uh, that, 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 that is the best guess I've got right now. Nirav, I just wanted to get your sense on what the quarter has shown us. So most of the results are out. Uh, you know, time for a fair enough assessment of quarter one. And uh, it seems to be a bit of a mixed bag. Some companies, of course, completely powered. Some spaces, defense, etc., railways, have been a little underwhelming. And then these are stocks that have really, really run up. What has been your assessment? Yeah, you're so very right. So it, it's sort of a mixed bag. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, even at Nifty level, I think the earnings growth is just about, uh, you know, somewhere in the region of about 6 or 7%. Uh, which is fine. So, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm of the view that, uh, you know, it's, it's unlikely that uh, you will have the same level of momentum throughout the quarters. Uh, we also need to keep in mind that a lot of this, you know, you mentioned some of these uh, heavyweights, uh, you know, infra companies, railway companies, uh, they move uh, both on, uh, uh, you know, what, what is the visibility on the order book and the execution uh, that's happening on the order book. So obviously you got an election let's slow down. You also had, uh, you know, very, very serious heat wave and therefore, uh, you know, it tends to impact, uh, uh, you know, your uh, volume outlook and stuff like that. Uh, am I seeing something which sort of looks like topish to me? Uh, unlikely. So I try and look at what are my leading indicators. So look at the PMI numbers, right? The PMI for services for, I think, for the month of July, upward of 60, per, uh, upward of 60. So, which is very, very strong expansion, right? Uh, the inflation numbers are moderating. Uh, just keep the food inflation out. Your core inflation is less than about, uh, I think, in the region of about 3.6 percent. Uh, so, uh, you know, credit growth is holding up. Uh, uh, to me, you know, I believe that at uh, at at a right point of time, RBI should be able to reflect the economy, assuming that there is some sort of slowdown because our macros are in very good shape. You've got Fed, which is close to cutting the rates. Uh, so nothing on, you know, there's nothing on the horizon that tells me that, you know, I need to be overly worried. And uh, let me make a very important point. We always often make a mistake of trying to look at earnings right now and trying to figure out what the markets are doing. Number one, markets are forward looking. Secondly, most importantly, you need to reassess whether the markets are getting re-rated because that is, the, that is a period of time that makes you very, very nervous because, you know, there's nothing that you can attribute uh, to the surge in the markets and the P's are going up. And probably it's only in hindsight that we'll figure out why the markets are getting re-rated. So I'm open to that idea. Okay. Uh, in terms of um, sectors right now, Nirav, uh, with all the information that we have, looking at quarter one, looking at, you know, what you're expecting in the rest of the financial year, um, would you say that um, the viewpoint has shifted? You will see some rotational play here. Are you liking, for example, consumption? Are you liking some of these stories which were not as well loved over the last several quarters? Well, you know, my uh, strategist uh, has a view uh, which talks about, uh, you know, some sort of a tactical movement into uh, the so-called defensive names. Uh, I personally have a slightly different view uh, around consumption. Uh, uh, I believe that a lot of these companies, the valuations are significantly ahead. Uh, if you look at the net margins over the last decade, they have doubled in some of the cases. The slowdown that you are seeing, you can actually attribute to very, very strong price increases that these companies have taken over the last two years. So I think that is mean reverting, right? So I don't necessarily uh, see a slowdown in that context. Uh, it is a strategic call these guys have taken to try and maximize profits over revenue and to that extent will come back. Now, are, are these the ideas that I want to bet over the next three or five years? Probably not. I am looking at where is the India deficient, where is the capital chasing, 
uh, what are the new sectors coming up uh, those are the stories that i would be more bullish on all right thank you so much um, nirav for speaking with us and of course you'll see a lot more from the mk confluence uh, on ndtv profit